What's up, everybody? This is an episode of Quick Codes, where we take you from zero to hero in blockchain development. In this episode, I am going to be taking you through how to query the mempool constantly or listen to the mempool using Ethers.js. Awesome. And without further ado, let's hop into it. So you can see here, I've got a, a little uh, project set up. I've got a .env file and a TypeScript file. And that's it. And honestly, if you're following along, I only have this .env file to hide my private key. But if you don't want to hide your key, you do not need to do this little step right here. Um, so the first thing that we'll need to do is install that uh, just for me. So we'll do npm install .env. And while that installs, we can go ahead and go through the import. So we're going to import config from .env, and then we're going to do config, bam, there we go. And that's all we need to get our environment variables loaded. The next thing that we're going to need to do is npm install ethers. Ethers is a JavaScript package that allows you to interact with the blockchain. And so with that, we are good to go. Um, and so we'll go ahead and close those two up. And the next thing that we'll do is we'll go ahead and import ethers from ethers. Awesome, there we go. And with that, we can go ahead and start our function. So we're going to make an async function main. And then we're going to go ahead and call main. Whoa, I like that. There we go. And so the very first thing that we're going to want to do is create a connection to the blockchain. So we'll say, um, const provider is going to be a new ethers providers. And for this one, uh, we're going to use a WebSocket provider. Uh, there are a couple different providers that you can look at in the ethers documentation. Um, but for the purposes of listening to pending mempool transactions, uh, WebSocket is going to be much more performant than an uh, HTTP endpoint. Uh, we are going to plug in a Rinkaby endpoint. Uh, you could use any EVM endpoint that supports the pending event on transactions. But here you can see you just want to make sure that you're grabbing a WebSocket endpoint over at QuickNode. You can see for this one I'm using a, a Rinkaby endpoint like I mentioned. And then just to keep my little token safe uh, here, I'm going to do process env token. And so token is just a variable that I have set up in my .env file. Uh, it looks something like do 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 one two three one two three and slash, and you want to make sure that you do have this slash available to you. And with that, we have our provider set up. And honestly, there's only one more thing that we need to do. Um, and so we'll do provider. Um, and there is this dot on method. Uh, and on will create a subscription to an event. And so on, this method takes two arguments. It's got an event name. And so the event name is pending. And then we're going to make an async. OK, that works for me. Uh, we'll just call this transaction. Awesome. And in this transaction, we have access to the object. And so we can all first go through and we'll just log out the transaction. What this is going to be is uh, just the transaction hash. Uh, it's not going to give us any additional information. So if we pop open the console here, um, and we just run this. Um, since I'm using TypeScript, I'm using the TS node package. Uh, if you're following along using JavaScript, that's perfectly fine. Uh, you'll just use node instead of TS node. Um, and there will be a link to that package down below. If you want to use TypeScript, you can uh, just make sure that you globally install TS node so that you have access to this um, package. Um, and so we will just go ahead and TS node index TS. And here you can see uh, the script is just going to run. And as it queries the mempool constantly, is going to give us all of these pending transactions. Uh, but you can see it's just the hashes. So just the hashes is not actually too helpful. Um, and so I'll go ahead and stop this script. And uh, just go ahead and clear it. Um, and so instead of logging out the transaction, um, we'll call this TX info. And then we'll create a variable. We'll say const TX info. And then what we're going to do here is uh, we will await the provider and we want to uh, get the transaction. 
And so this will give us all of the relevant data for each of these transactions. And so this should go through really, really quickly and you'll see it's just gonna blow up our console a little bit. But here we go, awesome. And so here you can see my, my scrolling is just constantly churning out these huge big transactions. And so we can go ahead, uh, let's stop the script. You can, I think you get the idea that it is just tossing all of this information at you. And so let's just take a look at one of these objects here. Uh, we'll just paste this into over here so we can take a better look at it. Awesome. And so here you can see it's got the hash that we were looking at earlier. Um, and then we've got, okay, and you can see it's not going to have a lot of this. It has zero confirmation since it's still pending. But you do have information like how much gas that they put in uh, for the gas price. You can see um, the value um, and the knots that they sent it with. And this data, uh, this huge data, you can actually see it just keeps on going. And so this is essentially all of the details about whatever transaction that they are trying to send here all put into this big hash. And so using something like this, you might be like, okay, well, what, what's the point of something like this? Um, and the answer is usually around arbitrage opportunities. Um, people that are front running transactions are constantly listening to the mempool and they can simulate your transaction uh, using this data parameter. They can be like, okay, is this profitable for me to run? And so a common strategy that you'll see is someone will take this data and they will simulate the transaction. And if it is profitable, they will submit it and they can just say, hey, do exactly what you are doing right here um, but I'm going to add a, a bigger gas price and I'm going to price you out of this. So my transaction is going to get included before yours. Um, and so hopefully from this, you can kind of get a, a sense of how you might be able to perform something like this um, is just by really listening to the mempool for potential opportunities and then executing on them. Uh, and you can really just qualify that by, okay, you're going to um, listen for all of these transactions and then you can set up a requirement like hey if there's a potential opportunity on uniswap v2 uh, that someone is doing and i can front run them i will try to do that and keep in mind this is a very competitive strategy there are tons of other people that are doing this and their scripts and searchers are very complex and are well optimized so you know a 15 line script is probably not going to cut it for making any money but hopefully this gets you a good idea on what uh, is kind of lurking beneath the mempool um, because you know it is these opportunities that can make gas prices go up and can make you uh, pay a lot on slippage you know if you're not giving really tight slippage parameters you're essentially allowing other people to uh, take these opportunities from you and you know that's only 14 lines of code i hope this was useful to you and that you learned a thing or two and i will see you all in the next video